Hi guys, how's it going? Welcome to another Tech Talk video. In today's video, uh, I wanted to touch on App Store fees. Now, most of you, I'm sure, are aware of the Epic Games versus Apple lawsuit. Uh, this case began late last year and just recently a ruling was passed. So I figured I'd share my thoughts on the ruling and discuss whether or not the ruling will bring about any change to the current costs associated with uh, distributing apps through the various app stores. Now, before I go over the whole Epic Games and Apple lawsuit, let me first go over the current costs associated with distributing mobile apps through the various app stores. So you've got several app stores or marketplaces, uh, such as the Google Play Store, which is the biggest app marketplace out there, hosting over 3 million apps. Then you've got the Apple Play Store, Windows Store, Amazon Store, Huawei App Gallery, and several other marketplaces for Android apps like APK Pure. But as we all know, most uh, the two most popular app marketplaces out there are the Google Play Store and the Apple App Store. And for the iOS App Store, there really is no other alternative to, to it because uh, Apple restricts downloads uh, for iOS apps only to the iOS App Store. Now, the main benefit of downloading through these two platforms, uh, the Google Play Store and the Apple App Store, is that uh, apps submitted uh, to these app stores have to meet certain requirements to ensure that users are protected from any security risks that they may be exposed to when downloading apps from any other marketplace. And this is one of the main reasons why Apple has actually restricted downloads of iOS apps specifically to the app store. Although I always wonder why the same restrictions don't apply to macOS because on Mac, you can still download apps through your browser and you can also download through the App Store. So I wonder why that doesn't really apply to macOS as well, but uh, moving on. Now, if you decide to publish or distribute your apps through these two uh, app stores, for the Google Play Store, there's a $25 once-off amount required to uh, open a developer account for you to start distributing Android apps. And for Apple, you need to open or sign up for a developer account and then enroll into what they call the uh, developer partner program, which costs about $99 a year. So that's just the cost of creating or having a developer account. And there's additional fees on top of that, which I'll get into next. So the other app fees include in-app purchase fees and subscription fees. So both Google and Apple take a 30% commission on all in-app purchases and subscription fees. However, Google has recently introduced a new program whereby if you're making less than $1 million, or sorry, if you haven't made your first $1 million of revenue on the Play Store, then they'll only charge 15% commission. And then similar, Apple has a uh, program for small businesses whereby if you're only making uh, less than $1 million of revenue on the App Store, then they'll also charge 15%. And this also applies to apps that you actually decide to sell. So if you let users purchase your app before downloading it, uh, the commission will also apply. And then for subscription fees, uh, the commission drops down to 15% after the first year. Yeah, so the main reason why on certain apps like uh, Netflix or Spotify, you can't add or manage any payment details is specifically because of this cost. And uh, when it comes to the inner purchases, uh, you're forced to use the inner purchase uh, methods that Google and Apple offer. And the whole issue between Apple and Epic was, was Epic trying to kind of bypass this whole system and that got their app kicked off the App Store. Now, the ruling that was passed uh, prevents Apple from limiting developers to uh, using their payment methods. So the reason for this video was to discuss whether we'll see any cheaper alternative payment methods after this ruling. And uh, sadly enough, it seems like that might not necessarily be the case. So according to The Verge, 9-5 Mac and several other news outlets, it seems that uh, Apple can still continue to charge the current fee if they decide to. And that's mainly because they still own the marketplace and it's their marketplace and they can do pretty much what they want with it. And if they ever, if they ever do allow any alternative methods to exist, they would still set the requirements for those alternative purchasing methods. And that would mean they can still charge them a fee as well to actually uh, be an alternative um, payment methods for developers. And that would mean additional cost or additional fees for developers to use those alternative purchasing methods. Yeah, so that's where we currently stand right now. We'll just have to wait and see what alternatives do come up and whether or not Apple will have any strict requirements for those alternative purchasing methods as well. And that's it for now, guys. Uh, thanks for watching. Cheers.